One of the things that we need to become used to in piano playing is how we use our hands and how we count the fingers so that you know when we write the fingering into a piece of music what it means. And so here is how the fingering works. If you look at your hands, this is my right hand, the thumb is finger number one. This is number two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. The same is true on the left hand. This is one, two, three, four, five. So they mirror images of each other. One, two, three, four, five. This is important to know when we're going to start learning about how scales are fingered because they rely on your, your small finger being number five and your thumb being number one. What you'll find if you are right-handed, so you can see my hand there, is that your thumb, because it's so short and only has two or one um, joint, it's actually, uh, it always plays quite strongly. So that's not going to be too much of a problem, except when we don't want accents on the notes. But don't worry about that too much at the moment. The second finger is quite strong, and the third finger sometimes gets a much louder note than the others because it's a bit longer than your other fingers. The fourth finger and the fifth finger, you'll notice that if you do something with your little finger, the fourth finger wants to do it too. And the reason for that is that there is a linked tendon over here uh, from long ago in our evolution when we had webbed fingers like this, a bit like a frog. And that's still a little bit of a layover from that in our evolution. So that's why these two fingers work together like that. But it's a little bit awkward when we're playing the piano. So these two fingers are the weakest finger. Of all of them, your fourth finger is probably the weakest of the lot. If you're right-handed, it's not going to be too much of a problem. Um, but in your left hand, you'll find that the fourth finger is even weaker than on your right hand. So that's always going to use, you're going to need a lot of work on that. If you're left-handed, it's the exact opposite of that. So here's an exercise for you when you are sitting at the table anywhere. If you're sitting at the table, just use each of your fingers like this so that they get used to going up and down independently. And then try it with your left hand as well. And you can try and go a bit faster as well. Just keep all the notes even. You see that even in my left hand, and I've been playing for a long time, these two fingers are not quite as strong. Another exercise is to keep all the fingers down and just lift one up at a time. You'll see that that one is particularly difficult. And that one's not too bad. Okay, try the same with your left hand. This one is the most difficult. I don't want to lift up too much. And that one. Now, the important thing with all of these exercises is getting all of your fingers working nicely. You'll see that when I've got my hand rested on the table here, I'm not playing flat fingered like that. I try and keep a lovely curve. If you look at it from the side and from that side, there's a curve underneath. Now, when I was a little boy, my teacher taught me that needs to be a house for a little mouse. A mouse must be able to crawl underneath there so that they can get into the house. The same is true with your left hand. You See, it's like a lovely curve. That's what we're aiming for, okay? Do you notice that my um, uh, wrist is straight here with these hands and they lift slightly higher? That's the position that you're wanting on the piano, okay? Same here straight and the fingers just a little bit higher. You don't want this or that. It must be like that. Okay, so when you're sitting at the piano, you don't want your hands to be like that or like that because you're not going to be able to get um, the dexterity that you need. You might know about this over here is called the carpal tunnel where a lot of nerve endings come through a little tunnel and then splay all over your hands. If you play like that, or not so much like this, but especially like that, 
you put a lot of stress on on the carpal tunnel and that can give you issues with feeling in your fingers over a long period of time or when you're practicing for a long time so please make sure that your wrist is straight like that okay those are some tips for you for using your hands and to finish with a little game and i want you to try and see if you can follow my fingers with yours with this little game i'm going to lift the fingers like this and you see if you can follow mine here here we go here's game number one I'll try it with your left hand. Here's my hand. Let's see how it goes. If you manage that, you're on the right track.